has the Prime Minister managed to find the money for his completely unfunded £46 billion promise to scrap national insurance? I know that economics is not his strong point, but, but he might do well. He might do well, actually, to listen to a shadow education secretary who, who just this morning said, no, that's not how it works, Mr Speaker. Indeed, the IFS have also said the link between national insurance and public services funding is illusory, just like Labour's economic plans, Mr Speaker. But it's crystal clear that there's one party that's going to deliver tax cuts for working Britain, and it's the Conservative Party. Well, that was a long, rambling non-answer to the question, which was, has he found the money to fund his £46 billion promise to abolish national insurance? And whenever he's asked about the date of the election or people's pensions, he acts as if answering straightforward questions is somehow beneath him. But pensioners and those who are planning their retirement deserve better than his contempt for their questions. Because if £46 billion were cut from its funding, the value of the state pension would almost half. So I don't apologise for asking on their behalf again whether he will finally rule out cutting their state pension to fulfil the enormous black hole in his spending plans. Mr Speaker, of course we can rule that out, and the honourable gentleman should stop scaremongering because it's thanks, it's thanks to the triple lock that we've increased pensions by £3,700 since 2010, and they will rise in each and every year of the next Parliament. But it's Labour that always hits pensioners hard. It's his mentors, Blair and Brown, that broke their promises, raised pension taxes by £118 billion, and delivered an insulting 75p rise in the state pension. As one former Labour adviser just said, Brown destroyed our pension system. They did it before, they'll do it again. Labour always betray our pensioners. Yeah!